Welcome to another, another episode of Motivational Sundays with Kevin and Friends. Um, this show was originally created for the more than 300 motivational quotes I wrote for the contents of my book. After over 40 years of being in the physical fitness business and studying human behavior, I had always wondered and very curious about how one quote landed with another person. So with that said, based on perception and interpretation, we created this show. We toss a quote out there we, based on what someone brings, and everyone brings a quote, you know, one week or after another, and we talk about how the quote lands on us. I always wondered if this quote was just words that laid it on the page or whether there's a conversation to be had. We meet every Sunday at 9 a.m. My name is Kevin McLemore. I'm your show host. My co-host, Andrea Lyman, she is president of AFTRA and SAG in um, Boston over there. We have the voice of our show, Mr. O uh, Otis Spencer. And we have the dynamic duo over here, Christopher and Gilda James, as my co-hosts. Co so this episode is brought to you by RMK Productions and the 10 United Podcast Network. Our mission is through the power of story and our voice. We want to uplift, inspire, and share experiences and perspectives using the framework of teaching, learning, and modeling. Our purpose is very simple, helping other people every day. And so with that said, we're going to bring you a brand new quote. And um, we're going to talk about how we feel about it, how it lands on us, and what we're going to do with it. So if Otis, if you don't mind, fire away. The greatest effort is not concerned with results. The greatest effort is not concerned with results. And, you know, since so much is happening in Boston with the NAACP uh, being there for a convention and the SAG after and the writer's strike. Um, Andrea, how does this quote land on you? Wow, um, I it, it's kind of hard because um, most of the time I am concerned with results. I'm concerned with results when I have auditions. I'm concerned with results when we're doing this strike. Um, the, the only th time I'm thinking I'm not concerned with results as much is uh, the NAACP convention is here in Boston and they have something called Act So, um, which is a competition in all areas in um, science and math in in the arts. And I was a judge for um, vocal contemporary music. And so we had all these performers um, performing for us. And then we had to um, give them ratings, there were different number values. And then they said, really important to write constructive criticism. And so that's where I'm thinking the results uh, aren't, aren't as big because it was important um, to the kids, I'm sure, who, who won first, second and third place because those people go on and then you know get awards and the rest don't. And I'm thinking of the kids that didn't get there and some of them, it was very close and some of it, it wasn't. But the main thing is you're hoping that whatever you said to them in the um, comments is something that's, that's helpful. And um, you're hoping that their disappointment isn't such that it stops them. You want to make sure that whatever you've said is something that helps them go on and, and keep, keep doing this. Or even if they, maybe you feel, feel to yourself, Hmm, this is not the career for this kid. Maybe they find something else, you know, from, from whatever they did, but I learned a lot from, from watching them and also learning some people's introduction didn't quite match their song and some people's um, introduction and song were like very, very low key. You just didn't know. And I, it was a wonderful experience, but I'm hoping that whoever didn't get uh, the medal uh, feels like they know they did a great job. And that was a great uh, interpretation of <clears throat> a very profound quote that uh, is very open-ended. Um, I appreciate that because believe it or not, when I read the quote, um, last night when Naheem sent it, I was kind of like, what the hell is he talking about? You know, <laughs> how do you do that? Because we're all re result oriented. 
but when you when you put the word concern concerned with with it it's like you know are there things that we don't care about that we just do and we yes. do them anyway and not worry about the outcome of it and some of us do that some of us just get up and then go to bed and same thing happens whatever and it doesn't matter and uh Lionel Richie said it uh it's easy like Sunday morning. Uh -huh. I guess that's what it could have been. Well, you know something? I, I'm going to toss this over to, to uh, the dynamic duel um, over there. Christopher James, Gilded James. The the, the per people that um, they show up every week with the, the perfect backdrop, mm -hmm. which most, most of us is a screensaver. It's their home. All right. <laughs> I hope no one finds their address because they're living large over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Christopher, I'm a Southern boy, so I, I'm going to uh, pass this question over to Gilda first, and I'm going to have Otis read it again for our listeners that just tuned in. So, Otis, if you give us the quote for the day once more. The greatest effort is not concerned with results. Gilda. Okay. As far as this quote for myself is, Putting myself out there, um, I am very bashful and shy in doing things, and when because I'm I'm afraid of you know the res the results. So and I, if it wasn't for the support of my husband here, for supporting me and encouraging me to move on, you know, and um, get over that fear, and um, that's that's how this code falls on me. You know, try to get put myself out there and I'm I'm not worried about what anybody thinks of me. That's how I feel about this quote. And uh, and I, I'm glad you said that because I, we need to stop giving a damn about what people think about us and just kind of live. And um God please forgive me um for for for, for my 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 share. Uh, I'll repent later on, but I meant it today. But um, anyway, Christopher, you know, and I, I was going to I'm going to say to our, our, our viewing audience, if you guys have turned in, tuned in and have watched this on YouTube, um, I, I'm going to tell you what, what the concern for results are. You can always tell when someone is madly in love with someone that's truly in love with someone because they are always touching each other. And there's never been an episode here. And it's not because they're sitting beside each other that either Gilda has had her hand on uh, Christopher's shoulder or Christopher had had his hand or around her waist or whatever. You, you can see where, where love uh, blossoms and grows without even being said, said anything. So with that said, Christopher, um, the greatest effort is not concerned with results. How does that land on you? The way I see that quote, I probably see it in a slightly different light. In other words, uh, the emphasis isn't necessarily on um, results, but the greatest effort. And for me, uh, maybe going back to uh, college, and uh, I also worked in, um, well, was directed towards the uh, sports medicine or uh, fitness field. Uh, when I was in college, I kind of developed from that and went to social work. But uh, my medical background sort of taught me or gave me a few more pointers. And the way I see this quote uh, is summed up in one word, um, autotomic. Uh, all those functions that are happening in our body that we have no control over, that is huge, huge. The fact that if it didn't work, we'd be dead. But those functions are going on regardless of the results in uh, uh, completely dis uh, disassociated or unattached from any competition or any other uh, actual, any any uh, mental control. It's happening automatically. Your body is maintaining itself automatically. And those functions, if I gave a list, I would probably forget half of them or mispronounce them or lose them. But the bottom line is your body is forever maintaining you, keeping you among the living and those results are so huge yet they're not of a concern it's more of the function more of the, all those things working together to keep you alive so when i see the greatest effort i'm thinking uh your autonomic function your basically those things that keep you alive that gives you a lot to think about people for those of us that are, are that are living our lives 
or expecting to live a life that we dreamed of. So uh, Christopher and Gilda, thank you for the, that share. You guys are such a beautiful couple. The Voice, Otis. You know, I am so glad that I, I don't have to do the quotes every, every Sunday now because I have someone that speaks a lot more eloquently than I, I do. His voice resonates, bounces off the wall, and it's all worth repeating. Otis Spencer, an amazing human being, someone that's always giving without asking for anything in return. I mean, like everyone on this panel. So, um, Otis, um, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you redo the quote again and give us your interpretation. Go ahead. I, and by the way, excuse me, Barry White, Otis has some <laughs> <laughs> The greatest effort is not concerned with results. A couple of things come to mind. I, I go back to my early days when I worked at McDonald's, just out of high school. And you got your, your, your friends and they sit there and they start throwing one-liners at you. And sort of signed it, sort of the, not really put you down, but jokingly, but yet they're still putting you down. So the thought that came to me, and I said, okay, if you're going to do that, I'm going to come up with my one-liners. And I said, you're going to say something to me. I'm going to say something back, no matter how stupid it is. And that, if you talk to Gilda, Chris, I don't know if I've done it with Andrea. People say something to me, and I have a response right away, or some type of one-liner or some song <laughs> that happens and comes out of it. So I wasn't concerned about the results. Uh, an incident last night at the hotel, uh, I was talking to the father of the bride as I returned his vehicle, and he was very upset that he had to pay $48 for his parking. So someone in the hotel had quoted him 22 but somewhere there was miscommunication with the bride and their guests that that $22 was for self parking, not valet. So this morning I took it upon myself. I wrote to the, uh, the, 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 the coordinator for that wedding and said, why don't we reach out to that father ahead of time before he reaches us? And why don't you reimburse him for his money? Take advantage of the situation, believe in yourself, learn and move on from your failures. Don't let them hold you back. All right. All right. You know, I, I think one day I'm going to share um, a, a private story regarding your your, your wedding and valet parking um, with a, a personal truth story. Of my, no, the hell I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. All right. Great, great, great comeback with it. I was invited to a, a friend's uh, wedding here in um, Pennsylvania. They are a very wealthy family and they had the very fancy golf course or whatever. I pulled up in my little sport, sports car. And as I was waiting for the valet to return my keys, a guy pulled up with me and my date, handed me his keys to his car and got, got out, handed me the keys. To oh, his wow. car. And, and he, he handed the keys to me and walked in the venue. I said, if it had not been for me knowing the bride and the groom, cause I trained the bride, I would have taken his car, drove into Philadelphia, got a parking ticket, had dinner, returned his car back to him, and 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 basically let him live with the fact that uh, he stereotyped the fact that I was in a tuxedo, that I was the valet instead of, of a guest. But anyway, going back to this quote. So um, I, I hope some people that's listening to this is so short-sighted hear, hear this and change the way that they see people. Uh, I just had to put it out there. Um, this quote um, confused me earlier. And the reason why it confused me, because I don't understand why. Um, I told everyone today before we got started that I am dealing with a, a uh, recovering concussion uh, this week. I was in the hospital and I was a little bit afraid about having uh, to do this show because I didn't know how I was going to react. But listening to you guys, it brought into light uh, the manuscript that I've been working for the last six months. I've been doing illustrations um, for a book that I wrote uh, for my sister. Um, I didn't write the book for for profit or whatever. I wrote the book in order for uh, my nieces, my nephew that are surviving her to have something that they can hold as tangible for their sister. I created 24 different drawings and none of the drawings make any sense, but they all have a story to be told. And the purpose of um, those drawings is to make sure that people look deep enough into the drawings and look at the content of what I wrote 
in order to have a memory of what I wrote versus what they saw. Because cognitive behavior is that we are visual learners. And I was hoping that was going to um, that was going to be the case. So when this quote um, came into play and listening to you guys, the fear of me appearing to be stupid or stutter my words. And it's the first time I did an introduction and not have to look down at the copy. And I did it off the top of my head. And I was actually just as surprised as everyone else um, when I did the intro without any hesitation or saying, um, or whatever the case may be. But the quote does land on um, people in a different way. And when I think about heroes who give of themselves whatever, without any thought of anything in return, your mentors, your sisters, your aunts, you guys that show up every single Sunday and support me on this platform, I just want to say you guys are my heroes. And um, I, I love you and I hope that our, our listeners take this quote and take it to heart and give of yourself freely. The returns will come, so you don't have to worry about the results. Just give. Find 1,000 reasons to be kind to someone because you never know the person you're sitting beside or what they may be going through. You know, I know my brothers and sisters that are actively going through the uh, actor strike, on the writer strike right now. People don't understand what the big deal is that, that are not associated with anyone that is part of um, this industry. And for those of you that don't know, these people work every single day and they perform for our entertainment or whatever, but they have lives just the way that you and I do when we show up to work and we get a paycheck. Their paycheck has ended and it's being dictated. Their talent uh, is at a premium and they're not being rewarded for their efforts. It's actually being stifled. So at the end of 30 days, when you're able to pay your rent, your mortgage, your car payment, or to put food in your plate, I just want to let you know, look at my friends on here. We don't want to get it to get to the point that none of these people on this, who I'd love, that I'm close to, are struggling at the end of the month to make a decision on, do they eat? Do they pay their rent? Do they walk, ride the bus, or make some other decisions that may not be positive for life or anyone else's life you know help support this industry you know there are people that we can create our own uh, hollywood and support independent films and get a lot better um, product out into the uh, the marketplace instead, instead of the formula stuff we keep seeing every single day in the industry basically are training us you know, to lower our standards when it comes to the stories that are being told. Support my people, support Otis, support Gilda, support Naheem, support Otis. I mean, I said Otis twice. See that what happens with your head? Uh, Andrea, Dave, um, Chrissy, David, and the list goes on. There's a name, there's a face, there's a heart of good people that just want to show up every day and make a living at what they do best is making our dreams come true and allowing us as human beings to escape from our own reality and be entertained. Thank you for your gift. So with that said, Andrea, can you elaborate a little bit more what's going on with the NAACP? You got a big thing coming up on Tuesday and um, what's happening um, with the writer's strike. So the NAACP on Tuesday at 1045, um, in front of the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center is going to um, have a press conference, uh, say that they uh, su support our strike. Uh, sag after that's the actors, um, film and television actors, and um, the Writers Guild are on strike against the uh, studios and streamers, which are called the AMPTP who um, not only don't want to pay us a living wage, they've changed the system. Um, you may notice that you're watching television differently. Every time when you're watching the streamers, um, we're getting a whole lot less um, money paid for that. And also that they want to replace actors uh, with uh, artificial intelligence, the whole AI thing. And there are a, a list of other things that, that they're they're doing that they're fighting against but basically 
they want to keep their money and love the Bob Iger who's making 300 and something million a year saying it's unrealistic for us to want to make a living wage and basically they're they're okay with the strike going on until people lose their their homes and aren't able to eat but they um underestimated actors <laughs> survival and writers too we we find ways to survive and we will and it has brought us all together you know, there was every organization has some infractions, but this has brought us together as one. And <clears throat> thank you. I'm going to do something a little different than what we, uh, that we normally go around the horn just to kind of catch up, because I want people to look at Andrea, Otis, Christopher and Gilda. And I want you to think of the next time you 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 put resume or play on any streaming de device. And just realize Bob Iger is the head of Disney. He gets 300 million plus to do his job. And he is telling each of these individuals and uh, hundreds and thousands of other individuals like the people in this panel that you do not deserve a living wage. Some of you've got kids graduate from college. Some of you've got grandkids that just came into the world and you got a husband and wife. Ask yourself if someone told you that they didn't want to pay you a living wage, how your life will be affected. How you can help? One, support a black film or independent film. You can finance as a regular citizen with 50 to $100 or whatever the case may be. You get enough people together. A dollar, $100 turns into a uh, a thousand dollars and thousand dollars turns into a million dollars. And if you can do a million dollar film, whatever, we can bring you content that's much, much better than the ones they spent 70 millions on. Looking at the, looking at the eyes of the, the people and my family all on this panel right now and become a good human being. Just stop streaming the bullshit, the crap on there and support a program. Take a walk with your family. When that $100 million or $300 million that Bob Iger is, is making, his board can't justify paying him because no one's streaming. Then the reality of what AI is going to replace uh, a human being. And just remember, AI, if it replaces the actors and entertainers in this world, five years from now, 45% of you that's in this world, AI is going to replace you too. And you're going to be in the same position. Let's get ahead of the screen before it docks at your front door. And with that said, I want to thank you for tuning in. And I hope if you like what you've heard, we meet every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We toss out a quote based on interpretation and perception. We have conversations. Sometimes it's light. Sometimes it's very deep. And sometimes it's a message. We give you something to think about. This Motivational Sundays is brought to you by RMK Productions. You can find us on our YouTube page at RMK Productions and Network. And I just want to thank all of you guys for showing up this week. I know I got a little long um, today, about three minutes longer than what we normally do the show. But if you like what you've heard, share the, share the show. We had 181 new people that viewed our uh, podcast last week, and I want to thank you for coming in and watching Motivational Sundays. I hope that we get 181 more, so keep sharing. And hopefully this is your, your religion for the sun, um, um, for Sundays. So my grandfather always said, when you get to a place in life that you can help someone else, it is your duty to do so. Reach one, teach one. And I'm gonna to add to that, find 1,000 reasons to be kind to someone. And with that said, I'll fade to black and we're out. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, my family.